When you next upgrade or think of your next phone, think very, very, very carefully about which operating system you want to align yourself with. Because when the Internet of Things starts kicking in, so at the moment, you already we're at the tipping point where your smartphone is going to control your geezer, your security system, switch on your lights, feed your pets remotely, all of those kind of things. But listen to this. There are two, there's this fork in the road with the automotive industry. Two main systems, Apple and Android. Apple has developed something called in the car system. It's aligned themselves with Mercedes Benz, BMW, Chevrolet, Nissan, Volvo, Jaguar, and Ferrari. Android has started something called the Auto Open Automotive Alliance, and its partnerships are with Audi, Honda, Hyundai, General Motors, um, and Kia. My point is, when I migrated for the first time from BlackBerry onto Samsung, which is Android, it was an untold mess. Trying to get all your data across your contacts, it was just really, really bad. Then the next time I just upgraded within the Android ecosystem, I phoned technical support, and technical support, you know, always long-suffering, uh, big sigh. I'm like, oh, help, I need... To. And they said, it's an Android system, just put in your Google account. Well, okay, put it in, lo and behold, everything just syncs up immediately. So, I am going to be loath to move to any other operating system. So, that's what I'm saying, is in the very near future, the type of car, the fridge you buy, is going to be determined by the operating system on your smartphone. We've spoken already, it's on everybody's radar about e-health, wearable tech, but 2014 was the big wearable tech uh, year, and we're moving now into nanotechnology where it's gonna be embedded into your fibers. So it's been in the sports industry for a long time, um, so we're measuring athletes, performance, soccer players, rugby players, heart rates, all of those kind of things with jerseys, I mean uh, rugby jerseys and stuff that have the technology embedded um, into it. So that's going to leap out of the sports laboratories and you're starting to see, um, and that's an important industry collaboration. Fashion industry and wearable tech, it's where the consumer tipping point is really going to um, push through. Um, and then the one that, that just freaks out everybody because there um, is um, subdermal technology starting to come in when you actually just put it under your skin or tattoo it onto your, 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 your body. Um, but then ingestible tech is the big one. Um, and already um, I accessed a report which is called the Smart Pills Technologies Market Report 2012 to 2017, which is in two years' time. And they already said by 2017, the global smart pills market's value is going to be just under a billion um, dollars. So for, the other, for those of you who are not uh, too sure about ingestible tech, so you need a smartphone, it has a little patch and your tablet, you stick your patch onto your, your skin, you take the tablet, it blends and works with the enzymes in your body and starts beeping information to your patch which then be beeps it onto your smartphone and that's kind of how you're going through uh, with it. And somebody did mention it, if people are really freaked out about privacy and metadata, the next invasion of privacy is they're calling it care data. So with wearable tech, all of your, your, your uh, health records um, is going to be the next invasion because at the moment in the retail space, we're tracking you, how you walk through a shop, all of those kind of things. Um, and the next one that people are going to be freaked about um, is that. And I've just written something for Gibbs um, about the, the concept of privacy as a currency. Um, AT&T in America just did something quite outrageous last month. They've got a fast gigabyte service and they said, we share your information. They were very upfront about it. We want to monet monetize this and you know all your social media platforms do this, we'll monetize it but we will share and we will sell on your data to third parties. For the first time they said you can opt out of us sharing your information for $29. And I said this was the start of the virtual Gini coefficient because suddenly privacy is coming at a premium. Only the rich are going to pay for privacy in the very, very near future. And then we've all talked about this here is e-health. I'm sure you guys know about it. If you don't know about it, uh, by where are we now? March, April, uh, April or May, but they said April, 
mydoctor24.org is going to be launched and it's South Africa's first um, remote patient monitoring system um, which was strange enough uh, brought into the country by two Danish guys who I've met um, and they're going to do that so that's going to really really change things which means uh, in the near future you'll Skype your doctor and then the medication will be just droned to your place so if you're a germ phobe like me no more going into those waiting rooms and touching any magazines or not trying to touch any magazines. Um, but back to drones, uh, this is um, an ambulance drone. This ticks all the trend boxes. It's a 3D printed drone, so it flies quicker because it's lighter and it's still in a crowdfunding and sourcing uh, phase, but they've already released this video, which is very interesting. One, one, two, operator. What is your emergency? It's my dad. I think he had a heart attack. Please help. He's not breathing anymore. Please stay calm. What's your name? Joanna. Good. Joanna, we've got your location. The ambulance drone is on its way. Remove his top shirt to uncover his torso. Uh, okay. Great. Can you go to the nearest exit? The ambulance drone is almost there. Okay. I'll be talking through the drone now, so you can put down the phone. Now please pick up the drone and bring it to your father. You're doing great. Okay, pull the green lid. Now place the pads on your father's chest. Good, I can see that the pads are properly applied. Joanna, please stay clear of your father. We'll take it from here. Hi. I'm Alec Momo. I'm a graduate student at the TU Delft working on a project for Living Tomorrow and UZ Gent. Our vision is to improve current emergency infrastructure with a network of drones capable of saving lives. At over 100 km per hour, these drones create an ultra-fast response system capable of increasing this survival chance from 8% to 80%. This is because the ambulance drone is not affected by a current road infrastructure, but is capable of flying in a straight line, bringing down the average response time of an ambulance from 10 minutes to 1. We developed a new type of drone that is capable of folding into a very compact position. The drone essentially becomes a flying toolbox for your emergency supplies. Using advanced production techniques such as 3D printed microstructures and carbon fiber frame construction, we were able to achieve a very lightweight design. Our iterative process using design sketching, laser cutting and CNC milling allowed us to rapidly visualize our ideas. The result is an integrated solution that is clear in its orientation and friendly in appearance. Let's use drones for a good purpose. Let us use drones to save lives.